All right, boys, check it out. Camus 21 CX, Scott Dean. I have already ruined his practice day for the ABA. Right. Right. So, second I, time. I I'm, don't do well, this is my excuse. Right? If you don't do well, it's totally me. So second time in my life that I've been late going somewhere. Long story, but I was supposed to meet him at daylight and he waited 40 minutes. It's now uh, 10 a.m. and I just got to Texoma. I turned my phone off. Awful, awful. But we're going to check it out today. It's a big old boat. 21.4. Yeah, 21.4. It's a 96 or 97 inch beam. Yeah, I've got it in. I, I did the notes on it, so it's a pretty son of a gun. I'll tell you that. I, I've already posted to Instagram the photo, and we're going to go fish around a little bit, and I will share as we go through the day, so stick around. Everybody's been wanting to see the Camus, and I have too, so let's check it out. All right, so I've already been accused of bringing red clay into the carpet. We're going to check the whole shot. How much gas we got? We're at 77%. That's how their, their fuel gauge is in percentage, so it's basically three quarters of a tank. And the live wells are empty. Live wells are. No, live wells are full. Well, you know what? I wonder if that little. Yeah, that, that thing's been open. That's why. Okay. So live wells are full. And by the way, they'll leave them you full want one. Yeah, I want to see it with, with them full. So by the way, this thing has a, enormous live wells. I think I read, I'll put it at the bottom oh, of the you. screen. I think it's 45 gallons, even bigger than the charger, and like nine gallons bigger than my range. Oh, we got one full one empty. There you go. We may have a little listing issue here. All right, let's check it out. Whole shot. Okay, so one of the things that I saw on the website and Scott's talked about is uh, they put a, uh, a moving water scoop, if you will, so that when you're making long runs, you're, you're still getting fresh water in your live well. So uh, he's opened up the little valve and it literally got a scoop glassed into the bottom of the boat. I talked to Adrian, the, uh, the rep with, uh, with Camus, and he said that They've not had any breaks. They're glassed in super, uh, super securely. So we're going to check it out. Scott's got the live well open. So it doesn't do anything when you're just idling. There's no water coming in. But as you start going, I just heard it fill up. guys so i want to check out the front of the boat so uh now i want to i want to say something this plate right here uh -huh. is not camus uh -huh. i built this plate and i didn't sand it down good i'm telling you this so that when you look show it if oh, there's I rust, little rust spots yeah right. that's not camus is doing that's me did you just put a more heavy duty piece on there no what i did since i didn't buy you know i started looking at those Bath boat technology mm -hmm. and those mounts and they're like six eight hundred dollars uh -huh. and i thought screw that crap and so <laughs> i've got a buddy that has a uh that has a, a machine shop yep. and so i made a cardboard template and i took it to him and he just cut me a piece out of steel and then what i did was i i put this on here and then i threw bolted all the way through it and i've got some reinforcement yeah, on the sure. back side sure. and and i just set them up to where they were exactly where i wanted them absolutely and uh they're solid as they can be I notice you also have the super heavy connector on your trolling motor. That's that TH Marine piece, right? No, that's that that thing right there. Is
Yeah, yeah, I know what it does. It locks your trolling motor. Yeah, up. yeah. Is that a TH Marine piece? Yes, that's TH Marine. So you have to flip and open every time you pull your trolling motor up? Yeah, it just, take, it just takes that right there. Okay. So you say they also set up a recess spot for your Minn Kota. What's the little hole next to the Minn Kota? <laughs> I rigged my own boat, and I thought I was going to put something there, and I changed my mind. And so, and so that little spot right there was is a plug that comes with Garmin that I just put in there and covered that hole up. But what was the hole originally made for? This hole? Yeah. There wasn't one there. Oh, I okay. So you there. cut that hole there. Okay. Yeah, I was going to put. I was going to put. Uh, so these things have a thing called. Uh, Hold on. Yeah. So so these have a directional antenna. Mm -hmm. These do, and. I was going to put it right there, and then I realized when I pulled this up that I've got it mounted underneath here. There's a cavity right here, and I can mount it under there, and it's not in the way. And it reads? Yep. Okay. Yep. They, uh, on Garmin's, there isn't like a point one for Lorantz. It, it can be anywhere in the hull because it just works off magnetic I got you. compass like that deal. It doesn't have to pick up a satellite. So, and so I've got it mounted underneath there. You see the buttons up there. Uh, he's got tens, twelves. You'd still have space to reach him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we caught earlier. You heard him say he couldn't do it with your foot, but you can do it with a rod butt. Uh, it, and the good thing is, as opposed to the L butt, which we just looked at, uh, the recirculator is not not right next to it. So what the guy that was in the L boat said, he kept trimming his boat up and realized an hour later he turned his live wells off. And that's a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. So that's a good front end setup. Got your place for your tools. I have not been in the sump on the boat yet. Let's go scope that out. Oh, Ooh, he's I'm oh, some he's, big as yours. He's done got out the wacky Cinco on me. And he's wearing me down on these suspended 10 inches on the wacky Cinco. So Alright, so you've got whoops. No piston apparently. Yeah, and I'm gonna show you a little something that I did back here. It's the way I little things coming out of course and what I did was I that's my toolbox oh. and so I've got it strapped down in here and so all of my tools are in here and they stay dry there okay. the cool part is, is in this boat there's a latch right here and if I take my toolbox out I can get to all my pumps here okay and there's also one on the bottom that this is mounted on, and it lifts up, and you can get to all your stuff down there. Gotcha. So you pull your toolbox, and you can get to everything. I right? can pull my toolbox and get to every pump, every hose, my transducers, everything. Whereas uh, the boat I ran before, you had to take all that stuff out, Absolutely. and it was a pain. Yeah. It was a royal pain. I do see they got the cheapy battery straps, which you guys know I've discovered that uh, I really like that basket setup, which I suspect we'll see more and more of. But they'll hold them secure. It's just once you take them apart, they're not easy to remember how not to. Is that a jump box? No, this actually this will turn off the power to the 36 volt oh, trolling motor. I got it over here. And that's the one that turns off the, the power to the boat okay. itself. But it, you, you do not have a jump box in the boat then? No, well, I've got this thing right here is is it's called a, um, a, a Tournament Saver Pro. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been carrying this from boat to boat to boat for yeah, about from 10 Texas years. Boat World. Yeah. And, What's cool about that thing is, I don't know if you guys have seen this, we've talked about this in a video before. I just mount, I mount the button right here. So if I do go dead, all I have to do is reach in there. You can hear the relay kicking in and it'll jump my batteries. Yeah, got and it. then when I let off of it, it's taking them back apart again. Right, yeah, that's slick. That, that's, a, that's a really neat product and, and it's well worth having. Yep. So good sumpus access. Got your power poles right there pumps out of the way. Mm -hmm. So is that spot originally designed originally designed for prop storage? No, it's just an open space. Okay. It's so just, just an just open space. space where you can open up that lid and get to it. And I got to looking and I went shopping and I found a box that fits in here. It's actually a Plano box. And and the way water if water does come in here, it goes in here, it drains down here, it cannot get inside the box. And so all my tools stay dry. And I've got this thing's full. I mean just I I'm a firm believer in making sure you got everything you need out here. So good note, if you guys have problems on the water, find Scott Dean. I probably got one. He's got everything it. in here. Yeah. Uh, drift sock? Oh yeah. You got a drift sock? Absolutely. Welcome to Lake Erie. Uh, <laughs> Brady and I have used that thing. And we, we, 
Uh, yes, it's worth having, especially on a lake like this. Uh -huh. Yes, we've caught a lot of fish using the drift sock. Remote plug, which I love over there, so it's easy to get your plug in and out. Mm -hmm. Uh, pretty traditional setup. Kind of the box setup all over is pretty traditional. All of their all of their boxes, every one of them have these plates right here that guard you from. If this drops down, you know, it'll chip oh, your fiberglass. Oh yeah. Every one of them have those plates. Every box in here has yeah, that. Plate. I've got chips on one of my boxes mm -hmm. from exactly what you're talking about. You close the lid and you you don't yep. have that turn right. Yep. That's pull, that's very slow. So that that's that's another little little detail that they've paid attention to. Okay. Um, the boat. Um, from rigging it, and I, I rig my own uh, power poles, and I rig my own uh, graphs, and so there's, it's easy to rig with this boat. There's, they've got tubes that are empty that run to the middle there, and then run up to the front, and you can pull whatever you need in and out, back no, and forth. No corners. No corners. It's easy to get to. Uh, this was the easiest boat that I've, I've rigged in all of them that I've done. Cool. So I just asked Scott if he carries a spare prop, and he said he, he does, but he doesn't have it in the boat today. That's obviously an ideal spot to carry a spare prop. Yeah, a, a spare prop would fit in there, really. Yeah. Where do you carry when you carry one? Just in one of your back boxes? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just put it in the back box, or, I mean, you can put it, this thing's big enough to put it up here. And that's the one you said is finished as a lot as an ice chest as this well. one has a drain in it and it's completely finished out so that you can use it as an ice chest and that would be a monstrous ice chest yep yep but we've been talking so those latches you see right there I, i'm gonna call them positive lock latches because you don't twist them i would love to see those all across the boat show how that latch works that one yeah so, so it just yeah. when you pull it it just and then if you just if you lower it, it just and this one's the same way with a lock on it. I don't know why we wouldn't have those in the boat all over. That's a cool, probably a more expensive latch, but boy, I like that a lot. Yep. And they've uh, the latch system in this. The key is different too. You notice that's the key for the locks. Well, Basket's doing the same thing. Yeah, I, I think I saw in your video that that's that the Basket started using yep, this one too. Same deal. Uh, the boxes are almost set up identical in the front to my Ranger. I mean, they're, it's almost identical. Same size, same rails down the side, same dividers. Very traditional box setup. One thing I asked, so I spoke with the, uh, with the Texas Camus rep, and I said, what's different? So this boat's a 2020, right? So the one thing they changed, or a couple things they changed in a 2021, but the two that seem most important to me is I'll show you this one. so in that carpet oh well, i want to talk about that too hold on a second in 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 this boat the cockpit flooring is carpet that's now that tack carpet sorry that was a super close up uh, that's that same carpet i have in my ranger so it's not carpet if you guys have never had that it's awesome and it's awesome because as you all know when that carpet down there gets wet it doesn't get wind on it so the, if this carpet on your main deck dries in five hours it'll take 10 hours for that to dry down there i've fished for two or three days after fishing in the rain and my cockpit floor cock of uh, cockpit floor carpet still wet so in the in the new camus i believe that standard another thing i saw so something I noticed on this boat that at first struck me as weird is, you know, you guys know I've picked on some boats about their rod, you know, rod holder systems. And this one has that traditional setup. But look where they mounted the top of that. So how many times have we all flipped our box lids up and either almost lost a rod or lost a rod? Because in my boat, if I've got one, two, three, if I had six rods laying there, I'd have to unbuckle them to get the box open. Show your box opening. All right. That's weird, but that's a good idea. I so, like that idea. So when Earl had Triton, this is how they did it. All right, talk about who Earl Bentz was, or oh. is, excuse me. Earl, I didn't mean to just kill you off, Earl. Earl's still kicking. <laughs> Earl, um, Earl's been in the boating business, oh gosh, I think it dates back to what, Hydrosport, um, My first Stratus, boat. and that's when I started fishing. I started, I bought a Stratus back in the day, and, and then uh, in 97, they, he started Triton boats. He had sold Stratus to OMC, and he started Triton boats, 
And uh, in 97, I bought my first Triton. And, and he I was a racing it. boat guy. He, uh, back in the 60s and early 70s or 70s, something like that, he, he used to run on the racing team for Mercury, I believe. Okay. And um, so Earl. Now, if that's not right, y'all don't yell at us. Just that's what we think. And Scott and I are both old, so you know. <laughs> I don't know. He, I know he used to race for Mercury. I do know that for a fact. I don't know the dates exactly, but um, uh, Earl always made a really good boat, and Triton was one of the really good boats. And um, it was sold to Mercury, and then it was sold to a uh, Platinum Equity Group or something, and. Then it became a boat that it wasn't. Let's just put it. wasn't his way. boat anymore. It wasn't his boat anymore. Yeah. Okay. And um, he started he started Camus boats, um, I think in 2019. And pretty recent. And he started out mainly with uh, big saltwater boats, center console saltwater salt boats, and they started a uh, a bass boat with which the 21 was the first bass boat. Um, and I don't know if I've got the first year model of them or the second. I don't know if they had any 19s out or not, but um, it was a hard decision for me to change. But uh, so far, I have not been disappointed in this boat at all. It's uh, it it's it does everything it needs to do, and then some. So the second change in the boat is the rod tubes, right? That's correct. Yeah. So this boat is a 2020, and if you look, the rod box has what we all are used to seeing okay just just pause for a second y'all just take that in i'm pretty sure you could get a lot more rods in there scott well, I, I mean can, i can get all of these <laughs> <laughs> all right, yes, so. there, there's empty sleeves yeah. there. There's so, place so you see there. the rod tubes up there which is interesting because that was the next cool thing right yep but what have we all discovered with rod tubes well for one thing you better have these or else you're going to knock every guide that's right. on your rod off that's right so, and so you end up having to get those rod industry, socks right. for for every rod that you had yep. or you're gonna so um and to me i always liked it without the without it in there but if you take that out in this boat then you've just got the open boat unfinished boat, unfinished boat in there and there's wires in there mm -hmm. and there's stuff like that and so things tend to get caught in there mm -hmm. and and i've tried that before on one of my previous boats i took it out and found out that it was worse without it okay so uh, in 2021, they took this out. But if you'll notice, this box doesn't. Is this isn't the bottom of the hull like a lot of boats are? You know, the carpeted bottom mm -hmm. of the hull. That's actually an enclosed box, completely enclosed. It'll stay dry. It doesn't matter if water gets in the bottom of the boat. It doesn't come, you know, kiting its way down through here, which we've all dealt with. But I think they've taken this box and extended it up towards the front. With no tubes. And they did the same thing on this side, whereas this side right here got a wall. I got you. And so now, if with a little extra oh, so storage. Boat, you can only put rods in the middle and the side. Right. And the port side. And right. You can go starboard, middle, or. Well, either that or I can take all these life jackets and shove them up in there. Yeah, good point. You know, just someplace to scoot stuff up where you got more room for more stuff, like I need to put more stuff in. Gotcha. He did comment that it's a very large ice chest. He said it holds ice really well. And again, uh, as I told you guys before, I just lost some video. I'm not sure what I lost there, guys. But as I've told you all before, there's guys I know that are going to tell me this is the best boat ever. And there's guys I know that are going to say, well, here's the trouble with this boat. Or here's what I like and here's what I don't like. Scott's one of those guys. I, if he tells me that something's good on a boat, I trust him. He's done this a long time. He's been in a bunch of different boats like I have. So that's all That's all really good stuff right there. Good stuff. All right, so we were talking, and this is what I love about doing this with guys that, that know they're fishing. So we don't want to out anybody, but Scott's partner, I'm not going to say his name, but it rhymes with Wadey Brynans. I'll get myself It rhymes with Wadey Brynans, and he, he's in the tackle business. How many rods would he have brought today? 18. Not a good co-angler. 16 to 18 rods. That's, that's, that's on a good day when he knows what he's doing. But what Scott said was he likes that setup up there on the rod straps, but you can't put 16 rods up there. So he said when you're by yourself, so he's got, I think we counted seven or eight rods on the starboard side over there. That works fine. Sorry about the traffic noise. 
but he's experimented with the idea of moving it and actually putting a second snap up there. So I think he's saying he likes it and there's something he doesn't like. You can like. actually put one there. So he's talking about, because he said you can't move this over because you get into the lip. Yep. So that's a, that's a good thought that he can put a second one there so when some unnamed partner who has a lot of rods with him, you can both stack all your rods up here on the front deck. So positives and negatives about that setup. This boat seems huge to me. So I'm really curious what the beam is right here. So that's 67 inches. That's, uh, you know, I'll post it on the video here, but I believe that's real, real close to what my Ranger was. Right. It's not as wide because the L boat's 72 inches across right there. What boat? The L boat, the 520L. It's wider. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, so it's it's almost identical dimensions to my boat across the front. Oh, so we'll, we'll remeasure it. Across the back deck, it's 82 inches. 82 inches across the back. I think that's the same as mine too. I think the dimensions are real similar to the sea boat. Let's check it again. No, you're right. It's drop it to the carpet right there. Yeah, you're right. It's 68 inches, so it may be an inch wider than my boat. It's a big old boat, big old wide boat. Okay, guys. So this is the fifth boat we've looked at in the Great Bass Boat Search of 2020-2021. It's the Camus. CX-21. It's the same boat as the CX-21 Pro. The Pro just has more options already built into the boat. Obviously, you can add all that into this boat as well. So Scott's boat was the CX-21. It's a 21-foot, 4-inch boat at about 1,900 pounds. Uh, the 521L, the Ranger boat, is a little bit bigger, 21 feet, 8 inches, and about 50 pounds heavier. Now the C boat's the same dimensions, but it's 25 pounds lighter, so the 521C. Same thing between the 520L and the 520C. They're both 20 feet, 11 inches. The L boat's heavier at 1850. Uh, the C boat's only 1825. The Charger 210 Elite uh, is 20 feet, 10 inches long. It's a 1900 pound boat. Uh, and, then the, uh, and, the, and then the Bass Cat Puma Hybrid uh, which is the smallest boat we've looked at, 20 feet 4 inches. And that boat weighs in at uh, 1,825 pounds. So we also know we, we need to look at beam and not just beam but fishable space because uh, just because you have a big beam doesn't mean you have a lot of fishable space. So let's first take a look again at the, at the Camus boat. It's a 96 inch beam. It's got a, a pretty large front deck uh, measuring at the seat hole. At the back seat hole, it's 90, uh, it's uh, 68 inches wide, and at the back deck, it's 82 inches wide. Uh, the Ranger 521C, which is my boat, has a 98-inch beam, 66 inches across the front deck, 82 across the back. The L is, has a more blunt nose to it, so it's got a much bigger front deck at 72 inches and 82 on the back deck with a 97-inch beam. The Charger 210 Elites, quite a bit smaller at 95, it's just at 95 inches in the beam, 61 and a half across the front deck and 77 across the back deck. And the Puma with a 92 inch beam, uh, much smaller front deck at 57 inches uh, and uh, 74 inches across the back deck. So it's just a narrower boat, uh, kind of all the way around. Uh, and then this is just something that, uh, that came as built into their boat that I, I thought was kind of interesting. I truly don't know if it makes a difference or not, but a lot of guys apparently were putting wedges under their trolling motors on boats that had sort of a dipped front end, which they do for aerodynamics. And so what happens is if you're shooting down imaging, which of course I don't do a lot of drop shot fishing, but your trolling motor actually is kind of pointed back under the boat. So what uh, Camus did, so you don't have to sort of build a wedge in that thing, is they built the wedge for you. And you can see that little lip that sticks up above the, uh, above the bow right there. Uh, that little lip allows the trolling motor to be mounted and be in a parallel position to the water. So again, I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but that seems like pretty good attention to detail on their part to, uh, to make sure your trolling motor is going to mount level on your boat. So I thought that was kind of a cool little addition to stick on there and, and something I wanted to point out to you.
Okay, so uh, we, I just noticed it's the same net setup as there is traditionally in a Triton, uh, which I know a lot of Triton guys have had a problem with that net blowing out. Did you ever blow a net out of your Triton? You didn't? So but that one's got a little Velcro security well, on the I side. Did that oh, you I, put I, that in there? I put that on because I'm using a different net, and that net, the handle is real heavy and it falls down, and so I just put that on there and it kind of solved all the problems that it worked with. So that's one of the things we've talked about, right? How guys set their boat up, and that's pretty cool. Scott put a piece of Velcro wrap right there so he can still get to his net really fast, but he secured it up. He's using a different net than the net that came with the boat. So the one thing I will note, and I've talked about this, uh, I talked about it actually in my buddy's Triton. You sit very low in the boat with your feet way forward from you. And Scott made the comment, you know, part of that's because the guy who built this boat come out of racing boats, right? And you don't sit up high on a racing boat. I will say the one thing from an old guy standpoint, it's harder to stand up out of those seats for me. And yeah, I'm only 57 years old, but after a long day of fishing and my knees are hurting, a little harder to stand up out of these seats than some of the other seats I've seen, but it's just the style. That's the style of the boat, and I'm fine with that.